Hello Capricorn viewers, I'm going to be looking into your situation, what your person is thinking, feeling, what they might be wanting with you, what action that might be taken over the next couple of weeks. Um, if it doesn't resonate, that means it's not your story. So this is a specific group of Capricorns that I channel. So just see if it's if you're drawn to it. All right, what is what do you need to know about your love life right now? What do the cards want to say just in general? Sometimes they'll just come through with their own messages for you if there's something that you need to know about your life at this time. So what do you need to know about your life right now? What's going on? Stagnation, complacency, but you're coming out of that. We've got an apology that's either come in or coming in. We've got magic. So we have the we have X here. So I'm thinking actually this apology might be from an X, um, an X that was toxic, red flags, hidden motives. And you're coming past that now, though. So I think that you're. I don't think you're holding on to that anymore. I think you're in the process of letting that go, which makes sense. You know, the last um, Capricorn reading I did, I was getting that there are a lot of, oh, damn it. <laughs> I was getting that there's a lot of overnight life changes happening for you, basically. Kind of like a lot of tower moments, like old people falling away, new people coming in. Um, lots of blessings in disguises, like lots of life changes, like new living situations, um, maybe meeting new people, you know, out with the old, in with the new type of energy. And some of it was like scary and upsetting for you because it was just so much change all at once. But I think you're going to look back and see that it was a blessing in disguise that a lot of the things that felt negative and bad at the time, like loss of relationships or loss of jobs or loss of you know, toxic living situations, that kind of energy, you're going to look back and you're going to be really grateful that you didn't stay stuck in those situations because you were stagnant and kind of just complacent. And so you had to be pushed out of that energy and you have this breakthrough that's coming in. So this is more about you and what you're going through. And then I'm going to look into what your person is feeling right now, because I do feel the energy of, um, just new love or you're you're either you've either already manifested someone or you're in the process of manifesting new love you know you're coming because you're coming out of this stagnation and you're getting into this universal flow you're going to be in your magic in your power and you're going to be putting your intentions out to the universe and manifesting the life that you want so it's a really good it's just this energy of just breakthroughs and just yeah it's it's very it's a good energy that you have right going for you right now I think that you've already moved on from somebody or you're in the process of moving on from somebody. You were in just, it's just general stagnant energy. It's not just with a person. It could be with a living situation or a job too that you've just lost. But I feel like something was just kind of going around in circles. Like it was just stagnant. They weren't really appreciating you. They were just kind of taking you for granted. And I do feel like this is probably an ex. This is someone you have a history with. And they are probably going to come through with an apology and showing you regret. But by the time that apology comes in, you're not going to want it because you're going to see how toxic it was. You know, see, we have toxicity, red flags, and hidden motives. So you're well aware that this person just wants to have their cake and eat it too. You're well aware that the apology is just because they're losing you and once they have you again they'll just take you for granted you you're you've you were in denial about it for a long time i think you ignored the red flags for a really long time and your guides kind of pushed you more and more and more to accept the red flags and recognize it for what it is and let go of the fear of being alone and you know recognize how toxic this situation is so when the apology comes through you're not going to want it it might be freeing in a way though just to hear this person finally admit defeat because i think they've been so prideful in the past that they haven't been willing to apologize and i think it's gonna they're gonna apologize hoping to win you back but i think the apology is actually going to be giving you closure because you're like wow you finally acknowledged how wrong you did me you finally acknowledged your role and in, in where we went wrong. So it's going to be freeing for you. And this is the end of a pattern or a cycle. You know, you're going to have this, just this newfound, just closure and then just freedom and just 
this this breakthrough just this end of this toxic energy and your life is going to be moving again it might be overwhelming at first for a lot of you because it's going to be so it's just going to be so fast because it's almost like a it's it's like a dam that's just like there's like this all I see like all this water coming through and it's like the dam just burst and it's like there's all this this flood all at once and that's kind of how it how it's been for you I think that you've kind of suppressed your emotions for a long time and things have just been stagnant and you've just been kind of exhausted numb um in denial and you know everything is just going to come flooding in all at once and so you will go through this really overwhelming healing and purging process because there's a lot of things that I think you haven't really looked at that you're going to be faced you know have you're going to be face to face with that you're going to have to really um, acknowledge finally, you know, things you've been in denial about that you're starting to see and, and recognize. And, you know, there's just this healing, pro this healing and purging process that you're going to go through. And it can be really intense at times because there's just so much that's coming to the surface now that you had tried to bury, I think. I do want this, you know, but it, it's beautiful energy too. It's like, it's, that song let go by fro fro is kind of coming out with this with this group might want to check that song out but it's yeah it's a beautiful energy once you have this breakthrough once you do all this healing i really i think that you're gonna reclaim your body if that makes any sense we have sex and seduction here so i think this can kind of be having fun like meeting new people going out socializing just getting into this like seductive energy and feeling beautiful again i just I get this strong energy of just you feeling wanted and desirable and feeling attractive again because you're not with this person that took you for granted anymore. You know, you're going to get back. Maybe you've been kind of like sexually out of touch with your body due to the, how stagnant this person was due to them not taking control in the right ways. And you're going to get back in touch with your body. You're going to be reclaiming your body. You're going to feel good about your body again. You're going to start feeling attractive again. Um, and, and yeah, it's just this, this breakthrough you're coming into is just really beautiful. And then you're, yeah, you're, you're coming into your power, reclaiming yourself, redefining yourself, developing your magic, putting your intentions out in the universe and realizing the world is your oyster and just manifesting whatever you want. So a lot of you have, you have either already manifested a new person or you're in the process of healing and in the new, near, near future, you will be manifesting a new person, somebody who's actually going to be enthralled by you, somebody who's going to feel grateful for you. And again, you're just going to look back and realize all the things you lost were actually blessings in disguise. The universe just had to push you out of stagnant energy to get you back on your soul path and get you back to the things that are actually destined for you. So let's see if, um, okay, so, so new people, so that's the story now, but let's see, like, can we look into the future at all? Can we see if there any if there's, is there new love here, new love coming in? Can you show us what this new relationship has the potential to look like? Like, what does that, what does that feel like? What does that look like? And again, please remember, if this isn't resonating with you, then it's not your story. I get really tired of people arguing with me during my readings and saying, oh, it, everything was on point except, you know, this didn't happen or that didn't happen or no, this is, this is wrong. People are getting defensive. It's like, well, it's, if it, it's not, it's either your story or it isn't, you know, this is a specific group of Capricorns that I channel. And, you know, some messages will be for specific people watching this too. So not every single message is going to be for you. But, um, but yeah, I, I do hope it resonates for you. I hope it makes sense. If there's anything you want clarification on, just go ahead and, um, let me know. We've got fear of commitment, pride, stubbornness, waiting, hoping, praying, We've got loyalty, stability, vows, make your move. We've got planning their approach and choosing their words wisely. So yeah, somebody's making this move towards you, but they're they're planning it out. They're not just going to do it like that. They're kind of they're 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 watching you right now. They're noticing you and so they're they're trying to figure out what they're going to say, what they're going to do. And we have power struggle here that not might not necessarily be, see that might not necessarily be a bad thing. That might be kind of like a 
sexual thing, like a little bit of push pull. It's it's not. It's just like it's chemistry. I think and this one. What is this one? Oh yeah, magic power intention. We saw that one. Dreams, visions, and telepathy. Okay. Okay, so there's a couple different groups here that I'm channeling, it looks like. So for some of you, I feel like you do have the potential of true love here, but one or both of you are, is being kind of, this is, this is with somebody new, it's not the toxic ex. You're letting go of somebody, I feel, and then there's somebody new that's either already here or they're coming in. And the situation with that is there's a fear of commitment and... It could be that you guys miscommunicated and there was like an argument, like there's true love here, but maybe somebody got impatient or maybe there was just some kind of like debate or something going on. And so there's some pride here. Like maybe someone said something they didn't mean out of their fear of commitment. Like they said something harsh or they said something, they spoke too soon. And now it's like this kind of like these two people that want to talk but maybe one or both of them is afraid of getting hurt. And so there's kind of like this pride and block here. And somebody is waiting and just hoping and praying that the other person reaches out. So either you're waiting for them to reach out and you're hoping that they get it together and reach out or they're waiting for you to reach out or both possibly. Maybe you guys are both waiting for each other to reach out. And somebody is going to get impatient and just come through and be like, you know what, I want this. I want the stability. I want the loyalty. I want to, I want to do this with you. Even if we take it slow, I want this to start going somewhere now. Um, so I think there's two different groups here. Like for some of you, this is you that's got the sphere of commitment. And then for others, it's your person that's got the sphere of commitment. So, and you guys could be mirroring each other a little bit as well, especially if this is a twin flame connection. For some of you, I think that you got so used to waiting for love that, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> for some of you I think you got so used to waiting for love that I think you've almost like developed this pattern that's tied and again this could be you or this could be your person so take it how it resonates but somebody in this situation has gotten so used to just being on their own and just waiting for love and kind of putting the intention out there, but it's never really been real. It's always been like just a dream, just something they pray for and hope for and think someday I'll have this, someday I'll have that. But they've been kind of doing their own thing and just waiting for it. So it's like it was never like a real commitment. And then it's like either you or your person is going to start realizing that you have this fear of commitment that you didn't even know you had basically, because it's like you've just been so used to being alone and you've been waiting for so long that you have this pattern of just feeling like you have to wait for good things to come in, you know, and it's almost like a defense mechanism in a way where it's like you can just do your own thing and hold space for love, but without ever fully committing to love. And again, this is either your mentality or theirs, so you know what the situation is. So there's like a little bit of pride and stubbornness and a certain mentality that someone has that's tied to this this fear of commitment basically like just feeling like they just like good things can't last or like they have to wait like they like to dream about love they like to plan for love they like to hold space for love but when it comes right down to it when it's like a real world relationship right in their face I think they panic a little bit so either you or your person is going to get tired of that wait it totally, it totally reminds me of the, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Garden State, where it's all about just, it's a beautiful movie, it's a, it's a uh, I don't even know what genre you'd call that, but basically at the end of it, it's all about just living in the moment, and at the end of it, the, there's this love story, and this guy, he basically comes, um, because his, his father dies, so he, he goes back home, and he meets this girl who's just really silly and sweet and down to earth. And they fall in love with each other. But then it's just like his life is, is everything's just happening so quickly that, you know, he kind of assumes that he has to get his shit together. He has to do this and that before he can have a relationship. It's just, it's all about, it's, it's about, I don't know if this is a message for any of you, but um, in the 
in the show, he in the movie, he was basically numb for such a long time, and then it's like with his his um, mother's death. I think it's his, his mother, mother or father. I think it's his mother actually. With his mother's death, it's like everything just he starts and meeting this new girl who just really brings the life out of him. It's like everything just he starts feeling everything all at once. You know, he starts feeling all these amazing emotions. It's like it's this very spiritual, very romantic, sweet movie. I probably didn't explain that well, but hopefully I did. He basically just has this life-changing experience that just opens him up spiritually. And he's been numb for a long time and he starts feeling everything all at once. You know, all his emotions come back in and he just develops this new passion for life. But he falls in love with this really sweet, nerdy girl. And, you know, towards the end, he's thinking, well, I've been on antidepressants and I'm just now starting to feel again and I need to... I need to get my shit together. I need to do this and that before I have a relationship. There's so many, you know, just just overthinking things. And the movie is all about living in the moment. So the final, like the end scene of that movie is he's, they're at the airport and he's leaving and she's crying and saying she doesn't want him to leave and that they should just figure it out together, even if it's messy, even if he's got mental illness or whatever like she's just crying and saying let's just figure this out together like this is it this is everything like let's just let's not risk losing this and he gets on the plane and then she's crying in the payphone like calling her mom and he comes back and he knocks on the payphone door and, and brings her out and she's like what are you doing I thought you were going home I thought you were leaving and and you know he says you're right this is this is it this is life just just us here right now in this moment as messy as it is we just need to live our lives now you know and so it's really that scene really comes to mind for this group um so someone someone is feeling that whether it's you or your person feeling that someone's feeling like you know things are never going to be perfect let's just be together now let's just do this now let's live in this moment and whatever comes up good or bad we'll face it together and figure it out together so somebody is coming through, is getting impatient and somebody is going to come through with this offer of, of loyalty and stability and let's work through this together, you know, making promises to you. Maybe thinking about marriage for some of you, they want this long-term commitment. They're thinking long-term and so they, they're, they're getting impatient. They're wanting to make a move. They are going to choose because they don't want to overwhelm you. Either you don't want to overwhelm them Again, so whoever it is, either you don't want to overwhelm them or they don't want to overwhelm you. So this person, whoever it is, is going to choose their words wisely. They're coming in. They don't have a lot of patience left, but they are going to plan their approach. They're trying to find a good balance between being, they don't want to be too distant, but they don't want to smother you either. So they're trying to just figure out what to say. They're trying to figure out how they can present this offer of loyalty and stability and, you know, promises and wanting the long term with you they want to figure out how they can make this offer to you without it being too much too soon or without overwhelming you or coming on too strong then we have power struggle and telepathy here i think it's just a rough balance that you know you and your person are trying to find right now but I think with dreams, visions, and telepathy that you're going to get more in touch with your spiritual side, especially now that you're free from this toxic energy that you were stuck with before. You know, we have all these life changes coming in at once. You have all this spiritual energy that's coming in. So I think that you're going to get more and more in touch with your, your higher self, your, your psychic side. Your tele telepathic communication with this person is going to grow and increase for sure. Um, you might be having vivid dreams that keep coming in, visions. Those are going to increase and it's going to help you let go of, you know, the power struggle and the fear of commitment and the, the, um, just the physical stuff. It's going to help you get into your, like, get more in touch with your higher self, basically. So, so yeah, it's, it's really good energy. Let's see if we can get some final messages. And if you're interested in a private reading or you're interested in purchasing, <laughs> purchasing, Oh my God, what is wrong with me today? Okay, if you're interested in buying either one of these texts, <laughs> you can email me below, or if you want a private reading, you can email me below. <laughs> my contact info is in the description box. I don't know what's wrong with me today. All right, what are the final messages for this group? That was all bad. <laughs> Okay. 
I don't know if it's going to come out or not, but I do feel like your person has thought about marriage. So I'm detached from the karmic. I'm planning out a way to finally end things with them. Yeah, so for some of you, your person is is the one that's going through all these life changes. And again, you could be mirroring each other too. Like you're both going through all these life changes where, you know, third party energies are being wiped out so that you guys can be together. I'm going to reach out. I'm just searching for the right words to say. I communicate with you through songs and movies. So, you know, lots of, of psychic communication going on here for this group. Through music, you might hear just, just lots of synchronicities. Movies, it makes sense. It's interesting. I just mentioned the movie Garden State. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll break my heart. It's hard for me to fully trust you. So this person, yeah, somebody is really anxious and getting an impatient and they want more security in this relationship they want to make sure it's a sure deal you're so different than anyone i've ever met you've helped me become a better person so they really set you apart from the rest they realize how unique you are you're my best friend i'm afraid that you will never forgive me so I, this might be specific for some of you if there's something they did or said wrong they might be kind of in their head about that they really want to do right by you they really want to be perfect for you they really it's a very pure connection that you guys have here i want to cuddle with you so if there is a physical distance they're definitely missing you and wanting to they're wanting that closeness with you so i hope that resonates um go ahead and subscribe if it does thank you